Hey, what's up guys? Joker here, and it is currently cold as shit in New Jersey where I am. In fact, it's actually negative eight degrees Celsius. So we're going to be taking advantage of that and revisiting something that I did a few years ago here on the channel where I had actually tested thermals and gaming performance with a small form factor desktop PC. But today we're gonna to be doing it with a notebook and not just any notebook, one of the NVIDIA Max-Q notebooks. This one happens to be from Acer. It's their new Triton 700 laptop, which I did get a chance to get a brief hands-on with earlier this year at the Acer Next event in New York City. And I was very impressed with it as it you know, brought a lot of new features um, to, the, to the notebook space. And we are gonna be doing a full review on this laptop in the near future. But today we're just gonna be talking about thermals indoors versus outdoors to see what the difference is there and if we're seeing any sort of you know thermal throttling or performance issues with a max q notebook which is really been pushed forward by nvidia so that they can try to get full desktop gpus into relatively small notebooks this one here is only 8.9 millimeters thick so by no means is this a thick boy it's a very thin notebook it comes in at 5.4 pounds so having a full size desktop gtx 1080 in there certainly you know introduces a lot of questions whether or not we're going to see issues with temperatures and that so like i said we're going to go from inside where it's about 20 degrees celsius we keep our thermostat at 68 degrees fahrenheit which is 20 degrees celsius and outside right now it is negative eight degrees celsius so it is super cold so we're seeing a 28 degree difference there going from indoors to outdoors so let me know down in the comments below right now before we get into all the data you know, how much of a difference do you think we're going to see uh, going between indoors and outdoors? Do you think it'll be a one-to-one -one difference? Will it be a straight-up negative 20 or a 28-degree delta T going from inside to outside? Or do you think it'll be a lot closer than that? Let me know down in the comments below. But I'm going to go back inside right now. We're going to continue the rest of the video because I am cold as shit. My ears are freezing right now. Um, it really only takes a few seconds outside right now to this really to just kind of chill you to the bone. So I want to get back in the house and uh, we'll pick up where we left off. All right, so we're back inside now where it is a lot warmer than it was just a few minutes ago. So let's discuss the testing methodology that I used here before we get into all of the numbers. I decided to run three different stress tests on the system, which I let run each for 10 minutes consecutively. So for that, I used Ida64, which was stressing the full system, not just the CPU, but I also had it stressing the CPU, the memory, and the GPU. So it was stressing all of that in Ida64 so that we can get a look at the temperatures under full load for the GPU with the CPU also running in the background, which could be a realistic scenario if you were playing a very intensive game that was pushing both of them to their limit. I also let the Heaven benchmark run, which is a really just a stress on the GPU itself. So I had that running on a loop and I also settled on using the Gears of War benchmark because just like the Heaven benchmark, you can let it just run consecutively without any type of interference. It'll just keep on going through it over and over and over again until you stop it. So we're gonna be using those three tests to look at the thermals on the laptop, the core clock on the GPU to see if there was any difference inside versus outside, and finally frame rate on that Gears of War benchmark to see if the differences we are seeing is actually being represented in gaming performance and hurting us in terms of FPS. And we'll kick things off looking at Gears of War in a side-by-side -side comparison because I think this will give us the best visual representation of inside versus outside. Looking at this here, you can see that the GPU uh, outside is staying below 60 degrees Celsius all of the time here, while indoors, we're, cr we're pretty much banging on the door of 80 degrees Celsius or just below that really. And the story is the same with the i7 7700HQ CPU inside of the system, which is pushing 80 degrees Celsius when we were using it indoors versus outdoors where it's around 60 degrees Celsius and some sometimes even coming just below that. So a pretty big difference there in terms of the temperatures on the GPU and the CPU. But you can see on the core clock that this is actually affecting it as well for the GPU, which is really evidence of NVIDIA's boost technology, their GPU boost, which is heavily reliant on temperature. So just having the GPU running at about 20 degrees cooler here 
you can see that it is running anywhere from 50 to 100 megahertz higher than having it indoors where it was warmer, even though we really weren't hitting the thermal ceiling of a GTX 1080, which I believe is 83 degrees Celsius. We're below 80 here, but still we are seeing the GPU boost affected by it directly. But even though we are seeing that difference there, the frame rates are actually pretty darn close and if not identical, and we'll see that in the graphs here in a moment as well when we go over those. So we'll look at temperatures first here in the graph between the three different tests that I ran and you could see that on the GPU it was consistent across the board here where we're pretty much seeing a 20 degree Delta T inside versus outside. Gears of War had an average temperature of 76 degrees after the 10 minute run inside versus the 56 degrees outdoors. On the Heaven benchmark, pretty much within the margin of error compared to Gears of War, almost the same exact numbers we're seeing with the inside at 74 degrees Celsius and outside at 55 degrees Celsius. And then finally, Ida 64, which was stressing the CPU and the GPU under 100% load, we saw 75 degrees inside versus 56 degrees outside. So it doesn't really matter which one of these benchmarks we are running here, looking at the statistics side by side and comparing inside versus outside, we're seeing roughly a 20 degree drop off, even though it is 28 degrees cooler outside. So that is a rather interesting result. Let me know in the comments if that lined up with what you were predicting would happen here. So a 28 degree difference led to a 20 degree difference on the actual GPU. So very interesting results I feel. Going into now we'll look at the core clocks on the GPU. We can see once again when testing outside where it was much much cooler the GPU was able to run at a higher frequency consistently. Averaging out here we can see on Gears of War it was running at 1651 megahertz versus 1593. On the Heaven benchmark we were at 1526 to 1486. And then finally with Ida 64, not too much of a difference, that was the closest one honestly, with 1672 outside versus 1652 inside. So on all of these tests here we do see that when it's running cooler it's actually able to run faster but how does this actually affect our frame rates and performance on Gears of War? Let's go ahead and take a look at that as the last graph here. And you can see we don't have that much variance at all, even though it was running 20 degrees cooler and consistently running at anywhere from 50 to 100 megahertz higher, we can see that the Gears of War average FPS was 127 inside versus 126 outside, which is within the margin of error, but it was actually even ahead. It was ahead on inside where it was running warmer. We actually got one frame more. But as I said, that's really within the margin of error within variance as the 1% low is identical. It was 88 degrees Celsius both inside and outside. So we see no difference there whatsoever. So let me know what you think about these results down in the comments below. I think the takeaway from this is that if you are trying to run a laptop or a notebook for gaming, you know, which, which is in a small enclosure in general, let alone even if you're on, you know, something like this, you should probably try to keep it as cool as possible with your environment. If you live in a really hot environment, you can't control it that much, then you probably shouldn't be too worried because at the end of the day, at least in terms of performance, it didn't really seem to affect our frame rates in any way but the core clocks and the, and the temperatures were affected quite a bit, but really what is equal is not much of a difference in terms of FPS. So it's really gonna be up to you whether or not that is going to be something that bothers you. Certainly with temperatures that could lead to more rapid degradation of the hardware, but you really can't advise anyone to say, well, if you know you don't want that to happen, just go play in negative eight degrees Celsius weather and you'll be aces, cause that's just not realistic. So I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here, guys. Please let me know your thoughts on this type of thermal testing as it's a bit outside of the box and something I haven't visited since a couple of years ago when I did it on that small form factor build. But doing these kind of outside the box experiments is really what makes doing YouTube fun and it was certainly different than what we are usually doing here on the channel. So let me know your thoughts on the testing down in the comments below and if you know the results we saw lined up with what you predicted would happen. I would certainly be open to discussing this with you and seeing what you guys, your guys' feedback is. If you want to see me do this with more hardware in the future, then you know let me know that down in the comments below as well, and maybe we can do this with 
different types of setups and configurations. If you can really offer any ideas, then I'll certainly take them in, under advisement and maybe we could do some more videos like this in the near future. If you want any information on the Acer Triton 700 notebook, I will leave a link over to Amazon down in the description below. It costs just below $3,000, but this is a fully equipped notebook, slim, light, it's got a GTX 1080 in there and an i7 7700HQ with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So this thing has got some really top end specs and an interesting design as well. As I said, we will be doing a full review on this in the near future and I'll actually be taking this notebook with me out to CES in January so that I can use it to edit all of my videos from Las Vegas. So definitely gonna have some more content coming on this notebook in the future as it's very unique. And to date so far, this is my favorite notebook that I have tested out by far. Notebooks, laptops, whatever. This is the best one that I've used to date because I just love the power and the form factor and it is just really well built too. So I'm gonna get out of here guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and you we'll all have a happy new year if I don't see you before 2018. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys in 2018. Ta-ra. <laughs>